My name is Mike Alberts. I'm 33 years old, almost 34, from Melbourne, Florida. Uh, I've never really considered myself a runner. I started training for my first ultra about uh, a year and a half ago. I was actually on a bikepacking trip across Florida doing the Coast to Coast Trail and listened to a bunch of audiobooks on ultra running and uh, I just got the urge to sign up for one. Uh, long story short, uh, three months later, I placed third overall in the Vero Beach Octopus Ultra 50 miler and uh, yeah, I, I was hooked ever since. The Across Florida 200 is a virtual race that can be started anytime between November 1st and December 31st. It starts in Inglis, Florida and goes all the way across the state of Florida up through the Ocala National Forest and ends at the St. John's Pier in St. Augustine. A large part of the course is on the beautiful Florida Trail, uh, but it also covers many smaller cities utilizing dirt roads, paved roads, a bunch of smaller connecting trails. Uh, it's, it's truly a unique adventure, and while I was drawn in by the allure of the 200 mile distance, uh, the beauty of the Florida Trail and just going through some of the lesser known parts of Florida was what really made me want to sign up. Something unique about this race is because it is virtual and you can start at any time, uh, there's absolutely no aid on the course at all. You have to either bring a crew, uh, drop stashes, drop supplies, and it's really up to you to figure out the course, research the GPX file, research the route, and uh, get your ass all the way across Florida. Okay, Matt Clapper and I about to start the Across Florida 200. Yes, sir. We're gonna get a 10 second countdown and take off. So let's do it. 10, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, six five, five, four, four three, two, two, one. We're off, baby. Here Woo! we go. Oh man, months in the making. Yes, sir. Time to get the job done. Man. Time to get it done. There we go. Got the crossing. <laughs> okay, here we go. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was the first confusing part of the course. Uh, not too bad, the road was right here. So now off to the road section. And man, the, the warm up's over now. Now it's, the, uh, now it's time to have an adventure. Okay, we got a mile 10 update. We've been doing five minutes running, one minute walking right from the start. And it feels good. That's what Matt's been training at. I trained at it a little bit. And I think that's gonna carry us a long way in this race, but 10 in, feeling good. We're hydrating, we're eating. Feeling we're getting good, it, feeling strong. We're getting it done. A little bit of casual trespassing. Let's get over this thing. Okay, now on to uh, this sand spur. Oh my gosh, I, he was not joking. This is, looks like nothing but sand spurs. Uh, yeah, about 14 and a half in, uh, still doing good. Sun's coming up, it's getting hot, uh, humid out. But, hey, we're hitting it. I gotcha. Here we go.
Just got through the first section of uh, sand spurs. Not too bad, it was pretty quick. It was only like uh, maybe like a mile. Uh, that's the first section though. Definitely pulling some out of our socks, but not bad. Uh, sort of runnable. Yeah, it's really taken in the magnitude of what we're doing right now as we stop and you know pick some sand spurs out. But yeah, really taking in the magnitude of running 200 miles. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing that we can be out here doing this, especially together, finding someone to run it with, so. 100%. Man. All right. All the sand spurs out. Got them all out. We're off. Yes, sir. So I'm running this race with my buddy, Matt Clapper. Uh, he is the best wingman I could hope for. Uh, he is an absolute machine, and uh, he's had some really extraordinary races this year. Funny enough, my biggest fear is actually slowing him down, uh, but he's the type of guy that he will not finish the race without me, and uh, he'll throw me over his shoulder and carry me across the finish line if, uh, if that's what it takes. So we're at the, uh, Withla Coochie. <laughs> Coochie. We're at the, oh my God. We're at the Withla Coochie uh, Golf Junction Trailhead. Uh, this is about mile 20 in. We're gonna uh, hit another trailhead in a minute. Uh, it's escaping me cause I, you know, it's, it's hot out. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna about to connect up to another trailhead. That's gonna take us to mile 30 where we have uh, Matt's wife, Sam. Uh, with the car, some supplies, and then after that, we're on our own till about mile 95. We're meeting uh, my wife, so it's uh, I mean, it's a hot day, but I think we're, we're doing smart, we're keeping a good pace, but uh, we're stopping, rehydrating, and uh, we're playing it smart because we got strong gotta, and steady, baby. Strong got, and steady. We got three days on this thing, so yeah. I'm about to get my pack back on and get to mile 30. So as far as crew goes, uh, we'll have no dedicated crew, but Matt's wife is meeting us around mile 30, and then I think again around mile 150, and my wife is meeting us around mile 100. Other than that, we may have some runners meeting up with us for some sections. I also plan on making some supply drops around the less populated middle sections in the Ocala Forest, uh, but we'll be on our own most of the race. I originally planned to do this race solo with absolutely no outside help, but now that I'm thinking about it, now that I'm in the detailed planning phase, uh, I'm very glad that we'll have at least some outside help and uh, maybe a hot meal or two. Okay, we're at mile 29 with the Clapper Clan. Uh, the best, hi. Crew, cutest crew around. Oh yeah. Love them so much. So grateful that we came out. Oh yeah, I brought warm food. Got our bags. Oh, yeah, first 29 down. Uh, a little tough toward the end. Really looking forward to getting to this this spot. But now that we're here, uh, changing socks and yeah, just refueling and heading back out.
I got 40 miles in eight hours and 52 minutes. So uh, that's about where I want to be. I want to hit 50, well, even for 10 hours, probably gonna be 10 and a half and maybe closer to 11. But now that the sun's going down, that's a definite possibility. Uh, it was it was hot for a few hours. Uh, we stopped at mile 30. We're feeling okay, but then sitting for a minute, getting something to eat, you know, started getting a little nauseous. But got up, kept moving, and now that that sun is is going down, feeling good. Uh, packs are, our packs are definitely heavy though. We got, as I mentioned, 70 miles until meet up with my wife. So we had to really pack it down with uh, food and electrolytes and overnight supplies. Uh, but other than that, feeling good, feeling strong. Feeling good? Positive mind. Positive mind and keeping it up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can't see us too well, but uh, got the sunset right now. I think you can make that out. This is the sunset of day one. A couple more days to go. Yep. Yeah, morale's high. Uh, yeah. Looking to looking to make it through the night, uh, making some good pace, and I'll try to check in as much as possible, but if not, see you in the morning. Yep. So another major concern of mine would be miles 30 to about 60 or 70. This is a section that takes place on some trails and there's almost no opportunity for outside help like uh, gas stations or stores. Uh, there are, however, a bunch of trailheads sprinkled throughout. It appears that most of them have access to water and they all have bathrooms. However, if the bathrooms are open 24 hours, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of an unknown. I haven't gotten an answer on that one. So uh, it's, it's a little bit stressful not knowing if we're going to have water for long stretches. It really plays into uh, the game plan of do we need to carry a full bladder and have extra water on us or do we, uh, do we rely on each of those trailheads having water. So uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a fun night one. <laughs> Okay, this is worst update ever, but we're at the uh, <laughs> Lambridge Trailhead. We are, uh, I never have this ready. We're about 46 miles in. We are 10 and a half hours in. Uh, falling a bit behind what we want it to be, but uh, we're keeping a good pace, feeling good, uh, rehydrating, eating. So uh, yeah, this trailhead, apparently it's amazing, but uh, we're here at night, can't see a thing. But we're gonna get to it. Uh, we got a long night ahead of us. Mile 54 at the Santos Campground. We're about 13 minutes and uh, 13 hours, 17 minutes in. So a little behind target pace, but uh, trails were a little more sandy, a little more you know twisting and turning than we thought. But still, think we're doing uh, amazing uh, on track. Still trying to hit a 24-hour, 100-mile uh, goal. So still sticking to that. But uh, yeah, just want to give a quick update. It's the middle, it's, uh, middle of the night, it's only 10 right now. Uh, so we got a long night ahead of us, but temperature dropped and uh, we're feeling good. So I'll, ch I'll, ch I'll check in when I can. This is Baseline Trailhead Park. Uh, this this is awesome. Uh, it's got a big ass playground. Uh, bathrooms are open uh, late. Uh, water fountain looks awesome. So yeah, baseline trailhead, uh, nice, nice area. Uh, my watch says we're at 59 miles, pretty close to the course GPS. Uh, we are 15 hours into it. So uh, yeah, a couple away from 100K, but hey, we're just pressing on. We're not gonna hit that 100 in the 24 hours, I don't think, but uh, I mean, definitely gonna be under 30. But yeah, the, the, like I've been saying, the trail, uh, it's been tough. Uh, legs are hurting a bit, but we, we're keeping on moving. And yeah, stopping at these little areas, refueling, rehydrating, uh, it's been really helping. So uh, gonna keep pressing on.
Okay, we're at Marshall Swamp Trailhead. Uh, yeah, sort of feel a little rough. Uh, you know, getting through it. We're at uh, 64 miles in 17 hours uh, and 11 minutes. So, uh, yeah, next section is a, a 13 mile stretch till CVS. Uh, probably won't be open. Uh, may have someone meeting us, but uh, we're just gonna press forward. Joseph, Fogler, just... I hope we see you, brother. <sighs> Hope to see you, Joseph. I didn't want to call you out on the uh, on the GoPro video, but we're we just seen your message. We just seen your message. <laughs> we're hoping to see you. So our plans for sleeping consist of learning as we go. <laughs> I imagine we'll take a few 15 to 30 minute naps uh, whenever we find a clear spot. But I'm fully prepared for an hour, maybe a two hour nap, uh, at least once during the race. Really nothing over that though. I think if we stop for an extended period of time, it will make moving again way, way harder. Uh, I also read that it may help timing a short nap to align with the sunrise just to mimic getting up early in the morning. Really, this is such an uncharted territory for Matt and I. Uh, we've never slept during a race. Uh, I had Cruel Jewel, which was a 36 hour race, and I just kind of powered through that sleep. So, really excited to see what my body can do and to uh, get get some research on what kind of sleep that I need during a, a multi-day event. So uh, we are at about 76 miles according to my watch, uh, 20 hours, 17 minutes in. Yeah, I really slowed down that last section. Uh, I keep slowing down. Uh, I think I need a little bit of rest. So. We uh, pulled up to this Dollar General, and uh, just gonna try to get a few uh, a few minutes of sleep. Set the timer for about 30, 30 minutes. If I need more, I need more. But hopefully that uh, that rejuvenates me a bit. So here's to hoping. Thank you. We got it. I should also mention we uh, we're trying to time it to to where uh, when we wake up, uh, the sun's rising. So kind of you know get rejuvenated, ju jump right up. You know, sun's coming up new day feeling good so uh sunrise is in about an hour so you know we'll see uh yeah that's it okay it's the start of day number two. Uh, man, I was feeling pretty rough about 4 a.m. Uh, we stopped, got a quick power nap. Uh, it was like a one minute power nap. We spent the rest of the time freezing our balls off, but. Uh, <laughs> a little rain, a little rain while we were trying to sleep. Whew. Yeah, but we decided, we decided to keep pressing on. Now yep. the sun's coming up, rejuvenated. Heck yeah, for sure. How's the vibes, yeah. feeling good. We can see, last oh. night was so damn dark, you couldn't see. Uh, man. Probably an inch in front of you without the headlamp that got monotonous. Oh yeah, between the fog and the little bit of rain, yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, it, it was it was just rough. But now that the sun's up, got some good visibility on a beautiful section of trail right now. Uh, yeah, morale's high. So we're gonna meet my wife in about uh, four to six miles, about, and uh, get some get some Thanksgiving leftovers, uh, change the socks, refuel, rehydrate, and. Man, just press on. So, gonna get back to it. Here we go. We are at, uh, my watch says 82. My watch says 80. Seven and a half. I like that. I like that number a lot better. <laughs> We're going with that. <laughs> We're going with that one. But uh, 23 hours, 18 minutes. Uh, we just hit this one section. This, honestly, the last five miles and the next 10, are my biggest concern for this race because there's such a long stretch of that water. And uh, even though we're meeting up with my wife uh, at some point, it was, I mean, major concern because we ran out of food. We're low on water right now, but. As you can see, uh, there's cloud cover, uh, there's a nice breeze. Uh, it's very humid, but it's still a little bit chilly. So yeah, we're getting really lucky right now. We got about 10 or so miles on this road, and uh, I think we're gonna hit the Ocala area and, and be in really good shape. So 
yeah this day's just it started out amazing and it's looking like it's gonna be a, a really solid day for us so morale completely did a 180 from last night and uh Yep, I'm just gonna keep getting to it and uh, just ride that high. Anything to say, Matt? Nah, man, we're, we're out here grinding, baby. Day two, started day two. I'd say that running has uh, strained my relationship uh, quite a bit. Uh, my wife, she's very understanding and knows that I'm passionate about my training, uh, but it, it's a burden taking care of our kids when I travel for a race and uh, even putting them to bed alone on weekdays when I'm out for a training run. Uh, however, I suffered from alcoholism early in our relationship and I have an all or nothing personality. So I think she realizes that running is my form of therapy. And I sometimes think that she's afraid of asking me not to go for a run or asking me to skip a race uh, because she'll think I'll go back to drinking. Uh, but I grew up with an alcoholic father and uh, I'd never put my kids through that so uh, if, if she watches this all I want to tell her is that uh, I appreciate you so much for letting me do the things I love for allowing me for helping me to achieve my goals but uh, if I had to give it up if I had to give the whole thing up right now uh, I'd do it for you and the kids <laughs> Say hi. Cheese. Cheese. It's a video. I missed you a lot. Hi. Hi. I miss Cheese. Hi. Cheese. Hi. <laughs> I missed you a lot. Clear Bear, what do you think about Daddy's Big Run? What advice do you have to give Daddy? No, don't ants. Ants? Watch out for the ants. Am I going to run fast or slow? Run just a little bit. Run this fast alone. Just a little fast? Don't worry, Daddy's Daddy's running just a little bit this whole freaking race. <laughs> a lot of walking. Okay, Clay Bear. Have a hug? You don't wanna show up. <laughs> Got done with that uh, big stretch on the clay road and uh, it got hot. Video from earlier talking about how uh, it was nice weather. I definitely changed and it uh, got really hot and it uh, it's pretty hot now but a little more of a breeze, a little more of a canopy. So we're about a mile and a half from the uh, start of the start of the Florida Trail into the Ocala National Forest. So. I'm uh, really looking forward to hitting that, seeing uh, what that has to offer, and yeah, just pushing forward. The Ocala National Forest on the Florida National Scenic Trail. <laughs> we are now uh, hitting that trail we wanted to hit so bad. Uh, it's, I can tell it's gonna be beautiful. Yeah, it's gonna be a nice couple miles. It's gonna be, uh, as long as we figure out where we're going. <laughs> So my watch officially ticked over to the 100 mile mark in 29 hours, uh, 52 minutes. So at least for my watch, that's a nice little milestone. Uh, yeah, 
making a making progress moving got about 10 miles until uh, the next aid area juniper springs wreck area so uh eh, it's gonna be be a bit of a stretch to get there but uh yep trying to make good time with what daylight we have and uh, just enjoy the scenery on this beautiful Florida trail We're at 32 hours, 20 minutes in, 108.3 miles according to my watch. And uh, it's getting that weird point where the last two and a half, three hours were just kind of a blur. Like I think back on it, just I didn't want to run. Matt was making me run. I was running. I was, you know, bitching, but still, you know, still gritting out a little bit, but still bitching. Matt kept my head on right. Mikey's back in the <laughs> fight, y'all. Mikey's back in the fight, <laughs> kicking some ass. Uh, but yeah, I get, you know, you get a few extra wins. I hit uh, some smelling salts, kind of bring it back to it. But yeah, the last three hours are just kind of like, I don't want to say it went by fast because it didn't, <laughs> but it's just a whirlwind of pain. But we're almost to uh, Juniper Springs wreck area. And that's where we're going to get a little nap. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check in there. Look at the facilities. Uh, it looks beautiful from the, uh, the Google uh, Maps view and the listing. So. Yeah, check in a couple minutes. Okay, we got we got the Beastie Boys right here. They provided us with uh, mac and cheese, uh, hot dogs, grapes, snacks, everything. We're a place to sleep. So, thank you guys so much. You they you guys my feet. fixed his feet. <laughs> fixed Matt's feet. The job on the planet. They, they are true trail angels, and we can't thank them enough. Thank you so God much. Bless you guys. God bless. God bless you guys. That's what it's all about on the trail out here. That's a camaraderie. This is for all those doubters that said, Mike's never gonna find his supplies. There we go. We got stash number one, brought to you by Mike and his awesome memory. So as far as nutrition goes, I'm mainly relying on meal replacement bars and some gels, but we'll stock up on some fresh fruits and other snacks at uh, gas stations or my supply drops or any stores along the way. There really isn't much on or near the route aside from the gas stations and I think a Dunkin' Donuts uh, somewhere around mile 70-ish. So we won't have many opportunities to eat real food. I'm certain we'll get food fatigue from the gels and the powders and all the bars we're eating. But uh, for me during an ultra, there always comes a point where I view food strictly as fuel and eating becomes almost a um, mechanical operation 
whose only purpose is to just deliver nutrients. Uh, again, I do say this with a 100 miler in mind. Uh, we have to go twice that far, so I'm fully expecting to uh, really have to stop uh, and just <laughs> choke down some food so that our bodies aren't shutting down uh, from not eating. We're at 39 hours and 35 minutes. It's looking like we are at, uh, let's see, according to my watch, a 122.5. Uh, yeah. Uh, ticking the miles down. I just hit one of my uh, uh, stashes with some food in it. So we're just stuffing some food in our faces, getting some water in us. Uh, I was I was having a hard time keeping food down during the day, but as soon as we hit a uh, that campsite a couple hours ago and got some uh, got some fresh cooked food, it uh, man it just it rejuvenated me, and so uh, I'm gonna try to keep up on my nutrition and hydration and uh, tonight, and then uh, carry that through to tomorrow morning. Got uh, supplies every about 10 miles until about mile uh, 138, and then it's a uh, shot right out to the Rodman Dam. And then uh, that's that's really the final stretch. So just pushing to to get out of the Ocala National Forest uh, by morning or you know at least early morning. Okay, second video for all you naysayers that said that I could not locate my drop stuff. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Two, four, two. Okay, we got a mile 140 update in 47 hours and 13 minutes. Uh, yeah, we're doing good, keeping a good pace. Uh, Matt's feet are pretty torn up. My legs are really taking a beating, but we're happy to be out here, happy to be doing it, happy to be that much closer to the finish line. Uh, yeah, I was, as I was walking, I was just thinking about, you know, the sleep we've been getting. And uh, I, can't, <laughs> I can't remember if I've I talked about sleep on the GoPro, which should tell you about the the amount and the quality of sleep but it's it's been a series of s attempts at taking naps that have failed miserably due to either uh the weather or the comfort or the mosquito out in this stuff you know we tried to take a few a few little 15 minute power naps and the mosquito just swarmed us so uh the only real sleep we got was at juniper on that that uh that blow-up mattress that awesome family uh, provided us after a a belly a belly full of delicious food so uh, Matt got a few minutes of a uh, of sleep on that I think I got maybe a minute or two uh, I just mostly closed my eyes and tried to sleep but just just relaxed so yeah for going on so little sleep I think we're doing pretty good and uh, going into this this last day this last night I'll probably looking at one more sunrise um, we may try to take a quick 15 minute power nap if we're really hitting a bad place in the middle of the night, but I think we're going to be so close to that finish line and so close to that that sub 70 hours that we're probably going to be uh, just motivated to blow right through it and then skip the nap. But this is a, a 200 miler, so this is uncharted territory for uh, for both Matt and I. So hey, we'll uh, we'll see. For all the naysayers, it's 
said I wasn't gonna be able to find my drop bag. What are you thinking? What are you doing? You're never gonna find it. Oh no. Well, I got something to say to you. And that is, nay nay boo boo. Stick ahead and doo doo. Just got done taking a little break of rehydrating, taking care of our feet, reorganizing the packs. And uh, yeah, you can tell the, uh, <laughs> the sun's out right now. It's getting, man, <laughs> there you go. That was about the, oh God, 50th spider that has hit me in the face. The 100th, 100th spider web, 50th spider at least. <laughs> but I uh, just took a break, reorganized our stuff. Now it's, it's hot out, so uh approaching noon you know we're hurting a bit but morale's high because we're out here doing it you know the the ends in sight it's achievable there's really no way you know pending catastrophe that it's not going to go our way so uh high spirits but uh hurting a little bit My training was exactly like the training for a 100 mile race. Uh, I averaged about 55 miles a week with a peak week of about uh, 70 miles. I also didn't do many long runs, but I had a pretty heavy year of races, so uh, those acted as my long runs, a uh, bunch of 100 milers, a bunch of ultra distances. Uh, part of the reason I am excited to do this video is to show that uh, anybody, uh, even an average runner like myself, can complete 200 miles with a smart training, smart planning, and uh, the right mindset. Uh, the, the only thing is, I do need to actually complete this 200 miler in order to prove the point that uh, you don't need to run 100 plus miles a week <laughs> to complete a 200 miler. So uh, that is still to be seen. So every race I try to find the, the weakest link in my chain. So uh, are my quads hurting, my hamstrings, my calves? You know, at first for the mountain races, you know, it was always hamstrings, quads, worked on those. You know, you, you kind of find imbalances. You find, okay, it's my groin this race. I'll, I'll incorporate some stuff in. This race, it is the calves. I think that's due to the, I mean, just, of course, high volume, but also a lot of the walking and the fact that I've been, you know, really hammering the, uh, the tibialis raises. I've been doing the ATG split squats, nailing... That, uh, that VMO muscle with the Palaquin step-ups and the, the, the Peterson step-ups and the, you know, all of them. And uh, doing the Nordic curl regressions. So I've been hitting everything, but something that I haven't been doing as much is uh, calf raises from a deficit. I've been doing uh, some calf stretches on a slant board, but uh, really getting some deficit calf raises uh, with both a straight and a bent leg, a bent, a bent knee to a... Uh, hit that soleus muscle. So uh, yeah, gonna start in about a week or two after this race, uh, working that in because I got Forgotten Florida coming up in February. That's a 100 miler, uh, run bum races. Uh, great, great race director, great set of races. So uh, I'm gonna, you know, work on my deficits, improve, and then come back even stronger. And with that, we just got done with the Ocala National Forest. That's the shit we were waiting for. Now uh, now it's the home stretch. That was a stretch where we knew if we got through that, it's, it's done, no doubt. 
Uh, so now we got to get to find this uh, Rodman Dam uh, rec center and then uh, get a quick rest. Matt's wife's meeting us with some delicious sandwiches and some aid. And uh, yeah, just focusing on the rest of the day and uh, the coming night. Okay, uh, the Rodman Dam rec area was a little far. Uh, so we uh, just took a little trail nap. Uh, got about uh, 20 minutes in. Uh, I didn't didn't sleep again, but I closed my eyes for a good 10, 15 minutes, and then I uh, just had my legs raised, massaged them. So uh, much much needed rest. Uh, now we're gonna go get our water filled up. Uh, Matt's wife's gonna meet us at some point uh, in the near future, and just gonna press forward. Yeah, <laughs> I, I figured capture the the post trail nap in the middle of the day where it's freaking 90 something degrees. But hey, man, when you, when you got a nap, you got a nap. So it's good to see with uh, 154 miles on my legs that I can still uh, jog at a decent pace. Uh, man, it's, it's incredible what the body can do when you treat it right. And uh, you know, what it can put up with. <laughs> Cause I can tell it's gonna be a, uh, it's gonna be a, not a rough recovery, but this, this next week's gonna be uh, a lot of uh, a lot of foam rolling, a lot of stretching, massaging. Uh, gonna be a lot of pain, but it's gonna be all worth it. Uh, but yeah, right now, besides a bit of leg pain, I'm feeling feeling pretty good. The back's feeling good. It's just the uh, the calves, the the feet really they're taking a beating, and the uh, the tibialis those are taking a beating. But knees feel good, hip sole type feel good. Quads and hamstrings, good. So, yep, I just feel like I'm doing everything right lately and uh, I'll feel like that till everything comes crashing down. <laughs> Help me out with it. Give you what? <laughs> what you need? Either a push or pull. Oh, nice. Hey, 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 oh, hey, oh. hey, stop, 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 stop. Get off of it. Get off of it. Yeah, no, get off of it. Yeah, it was just fucking bending my that back leg. It was oh, okay. I was like, I was like, I don't even touch it. Ouch! Fucking dick. Okay, I think we definitely trespassed because uh, I think there's a way to get in uh over here maybe. Yeah. I think. You get in over here. I'm gonna check this out real quick. No? No, that's locked too. I don't know. We had to squeeze. We had to squeeze straight through the uh, we made the locked vents. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like okay. This one. Okay, cool. We got a way across. I think this actually opens up. So good thing this one's closed. Wow, that's beautiful. Look at that. But we'd have been <laughs> Yeah, we'd have been pretty screwed if we couldn't get that. And then Okay, we're going to go meet up with uh, Sam Clapper and get some food. Okay, inputting the secret combo. But tell him you can't input the secret combo unless you break uh, in. You got to break in first. Then you can have the secret combo. Nah, we were. Oh, and it works. Yeah, we figured out. But you nice. Squeeze your ass through. Yeah, the, you had to squeeze. You had to squeeze that gate. That was. Uh, Nobody was there to let us in. Almost lost you a toe and a nut. Yeah, foot care is a major concern I have as well. Uh, depending on the rainfall and the sweat, 
our feet may get uh, pretty messed up, so um, bring in plenty of foot care supplies. Uh, at the first sign of hot spots or blisters, I'm personally going to take the time to stop addressing any issues before they become uh, major problems. Uh, I'm a big fan of the book Fixing Your Feet, and uh, I believe that any ultra runner should own a copy of that. Uh, it just goes over general foot care, how to tape your feet, uh, prevent preventative measures, uh, fixing it once your feet are messed up, and then uh, aftercare. So I uh, love that book, and hopefully it uh, serves me well during this race. Okay, we're going to take a quick look at uh, Hey, Mikey, Mr. you got to ask feet. him. Mike, you got to ask him how bad they want it. How bad do they want it? Let's see it. I bet it isn't like too bad. Let's see. Ooh. Look at that. A little bit of trench foot. Uh, boom, then we got this bad boy over oh, let's here. See. This one's probably the pretty one, this right? This bad boy can't be outdone, can he? Let's see. Uh. Ooh. Oh yeah, it actually popped. Oh, it popped. Well, it's running. Hey, it looks pretty now. It looks, there it does. <laughs> it looks way better. <laughs> they, they look pretty now. Oh yeah. Okay, we are uh, got done with our little break here for well, about an hour. Yep. Something like that. Uh, and that's awesome. Wife Sam uh, brought his kids out, brought us food, brought us supplies. So uh, we were able to uh, lighten up the vests a lot, uh, refuel what we needed, eat, drink, uh, feel good. So uh, total lifesaver. So yeah, this uh, this whole journey wouldn't be possible without the uh, the known people that are helping us, plus plus those unknown people that that are helping us along the way as well. So uh, it's an amazing journey. We have, uh, an, if we want to uh, break the course record, let's see, we got 55 hours, 46 minutes. Uh, that means we got about uh, about 14 hours to get. Sorry, I'm doing like math in my head and I'm. I've been up for a couple yeah, it's exactly, days. <laughs> it's exactly 14 hours. Four, 14 hours to do. Uh, 41 miles. 41 miles. So that's that's doable. Even uh, even with 150 something miles on our legs, that's uh, that's extremely doable. So gonna get our socks back on, shoes back on, head out and do our best. And man, you know, even if we don't hit that 70 hours, we're gonna come awful freaking close, no matter what. So uh, gonna it's gonna be a all, baby. We're gonna strong all. showing. Strong we, showing. We almost gave on, up on it for a minute because I was being a wuss. Nah, and, and nah, Mike nah. Mike carried the team on his back. Mike carried the team on his back today. There's, there's been a lot, of, a lot of highs and lows from, from each of us. First, it was me, a lot of lows. Then Matt, I mean, he got low for like 10 minutes. That's that's Definitely. nothing. <laughs> then I oh, man. Feeling <laughs> feeling good. Man, can you... This video, this video is going long, but shit, man. Can you believe we're... 50, almost 56 hours into this shit. We're a smiling. Couple, a couple minutes of sleep. We're smiling, we're laughing. <laughs> Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Man, that's that's who we are. Wouldn't want to do this with anybody else. Oh man, hell yeah. Oh yeah. Not stopping us from getting this course record. You're gonna have to fucking kill me. Nothing's stopping me. Nothing, baby. Woo! I could run this whole thing if I had to. I kind of want to, but I'm gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna do some walk, run intervals. Keep a good pace. Uh, no reason to risk burning out trying to get this done in six hours when we got uh, 14 hours. So, gonna do it smart. And then when we when we see that you know 10, 15 miles left, and we get we get fucking hungry, maybe we're gonna go after it. We'll fucking see about it. This is the fast part of the course. Yep. <laughs> what is this stuff? Oh, puddle crossing. Over here. Oh, gotta get the uh, night three or day three uh, sunset. Oh, that's beautiful right there. That's a beautiful way to end day three. And uh, hopefully the race will be finished uh, right before that sun comes up. I lost my voice a little bit because I was yelling, so I'm fired <laughs> up. That's okay. That's okay, baby. That's We're okay. Fired up this late. That's a good thing, baby. Uh, okay. I'll check in a little bit if I have anything, but otherwise, we're gonna put our heads down. And grind, baby. Push and them grind. out.
we have 12 hours to get a 50K done, and that'll get us the course record. So uh, Matt and I, we're feeling uh, feeling pretty confident right now. Running smart still, saving uh, saving our energy for that that final few. But yeah, to get uh, to get 31 miles done and have 12 hours to do it in, that's a uh, it's a relief. But we don't want to we don't want to settle. We want to make a statement. So exactly, we're put it gonna back here, Mike. You put it back here. Hey, it's not about beating a course record. It's about setting a course record that's going to be hard to beat by any and everybody, baby. We work really hard for this all year. We work really hard the last two and a half days, and we're going to finish strong. We're not going to limp to the finish line. You, you heard him. We don't want to just get it, get a record, be happy, and see it beaten a beat by someone else real soon. We want to set. We want to make a fucking statement. Got that right, baby. Make a statement and make someone have to fucking work for it. And when they beat it, fuck yeah, we're going to celebrate twice as hard as they are because yeah. they fucking work for it. So yeah, we're gonna get to it. I might check in a little bit, maybe not. At least by the end. The lemon laid lady. This is the lemon laid lady. Uh, we got some lemonade here in uh, uh, Palatka. <laughs> we we've been through a lot of cities. Uh, so thank you guys very much. Uh, yeah, we're in the home stretch now. So they had all the jazz fest going on in Palatka. Uh, no music right now, but they got some vendors. I uh, got some, as you saw, I got some lemonade. Uh, there's some food vendors, but uh, I'm good for now. Uh, got our got our fuel. It's gonna last us for the last couple hours. Matt's uh, Matt's wife's gonna stop by, fill us up, and then just gonna truck it out to the end. So, uh, gonna figure out what we're gonna do about this bridge and get to it. Okay, much. Tina Wolf. Just uh, she lives down the road. She just met up with us. Brought us a whole bunch of supplies. Uh, thank you so much, Tina. Yeah, oh, you're we're welcome. we're making good pace. Thank and you so much. Always, you're welcome. Mm, you're welcome. Always guys. good. <laughs> See some of this trail magic. Heck yeah. Uh, At the end uh, of especially long so, two and a half days. Especially so late too. Thank you. Oh, that's that's always that's good stuff. Oh, yeah. Especially so late too. Uh, you know, seeing a friendly face, bringing us some supplies. Oh, what? Luckily, we met up with Matt's wife not too long ago, so we had everything we needed. But man, it's Have just getting a bite of pizza, getting a Celsius energy drink, Thank you. just a friendly face. It's that's awesome. So, yeah, we're gonna leg it out. We got about 24, 25 miles to go. We're trying to finish it in about five, six hours, six to six hours for the whole course, and to go to bed. <laughs> Maybe I might be too excited to go to bed. We'll see. One mantra that I repeat toward the end of races when I'm feeling rough is, "How bad do you want it?" That, that phrase reminds me of all the time I've devoted, all the sacrifices that I've made to be where I'm at right now, and it helps me remove any negative thoughts or thoughts of just taking it easy and uh, just walking it in. It helps me imagine what I'll feel like after the race when I look back at my performance, and uh, I can tell you right now, I'll never look back at a race and wish that I had taken it easy and wish that... I just stroll through the finish line. Uh, my proudest moments in running and life are when I'm beaten down, I'm broken, uh, but I dig down and and I find that fire. That's uh, yeah. That's it right there. Digging down and finding that fire. That's uh. That's how you remember yourself, and that's how others are gonna remember you. So we got uh, 20 miles to go. Uh, feeling some pain, you know, definitely asking those questions. How bad do you want it? We want that sub 66, but it, it, it hurts Even a 68 would be impressive, but you know, it's like it's how bad do you want it? We want it bad. So we're pushing hard still aiming for uh, uh, 66 hours. I feel like maybe the last time I updated it was 70. <laughs> we decided it was gonna be 66. So that's man. That just sounds good so gonna keep pushing Definitely gonna keep hurting, but gonna keep doing great things too.
62 hours, 43 minutes in, uh, 183.7. Uh, yeah, uh, since the sun's gone down, uh, Matt's been having a bit of a hard time, but man, it was, that was me last night. Uh, same symptoms too. Uh, trouble focusing, bit of discoordination, uh, it's fatigue, body just does not want to work. Uh, that's, I think it's just part of the 200 milers. You know, I'm not sure how to combat it besides taking a, you know, either a quick trail nap or getting some, some different types of food. I, I don't know. So yeah, last night I was, I was in a rough spot. Tonight he's in a rough spot. So it's just, it's learning those 200 milers, but, uh, <clears throat> still going for a sub 70 hour finish. Uh, still just, just pressing forward. 63 hours, 41 minutes. Got 187 and change. Yeah, Matt, uh, maybe it was dietary, upset stomach, ate something weird, too much sugar, something, but uh, that lemonade maybe, but yeah, he's feeling good now. We're, we're man, we're busting it out, so. Uh, yeah, like I said, these uh, these 200s, that's, this is new territory, so. It's, it could be anything, or it could be nothing. So, I'm gonna keep pressing forward, try to get under 67, and uh, see if that's our magic number. Under 10 miles to go. Uh, whew, it's rough, my legs are hurting. Matt's everything's hurting. Cause his heel, heel's feeling good. But yeah, we're just, uh, at least I'm just, I'm just focusing on, I know that within about a two hour period, we're gonna be done. I'm gonna look back, think about this time now and be like, man, that was a, that was rough. Cause uh, yeah, my feet are hurting, my legs are hurting, but I mean, we're under 10. Uh, it's just that final push and we're done. So we're gonna get to it. I really can't picture a scenario where we don't finish this race. I, I've put so much time and so much effort into this race that I can't mentally conjure up the thought of failing. I will say that I'm a realist and I know that anything can happen, so I'm prepared for the possibility of pulling the plug uh, due to an injury or any number of possible failures. but. As long as I am relatively healthy, as long as I'm moving forward, I I just can't I just can't imagine a scenario where where I'd quit. Finishing it up. Got we the got, job done, baby. Got like not even a tenth left, like a twentieth of a mile. And right after the Hilton, I think it's the uh, the pier is right down the uh, right down the drive. So I'm gonna get this. Full detail, oh. and this the last uh, last couple miles. It was they, they were rough. It's cold. Matt's feet are hurting. My legs are hurting. That don't I matter because we got this shit done. Got it done. Two hundred miles, baby. Two hundred miles. Oh man, best the best dude I could have done it with. Hell like yeah! He no. carried me on his back, man. After you carried me on your back, it was a it was a team effort. It and was an awesome. Team. Neither of us would have been gotten this course record. I'm proud of you, brother. Not the way other. To stick to it. <laughs> Proud of you, man. Here we go. There's that pier. Let's go touch it. Holy! Oh, shit. Man. Can't believe we're done. Can't believe we're about to be done. Yeah. I just want to touch it. So the race director said, uh. The start of the pier counts because it may not be open. So technically, I, I, I stopped it at the start of the pier just for the time, but just because it's the across board of 200 go and, it, and, and it ends at the pier, we got to go to the end. Here we go. Ah. We 
did it, my brother. Coast to coast. Coast to coast. Oh, let's touch that bad boy right here. Boom. Boom. Freaking proud of this dude right here. Best teammate a dude could ask for, man. It's really hard to describe why I want to run a 200 mile ultra marathon. I mean, uh, on the surface, it's extremely easy to answer. I want to test my limit and I want to see if I have the ability and the mindset to complete an incredibly difficult task uh, that most people would just simply find impossible. But uh, as for what's driving that desire and what's my core motivation, I think it's my attempt to live up to my potential and prove to myself that I'm not wasting whatever gifts that nature, God, fate, whatever gave me. I know I'm not the fastest, I know I'm not the most talented runner, but God damn it, I can certainly be the toughest. I. I guess it all comes down to proving to myself that I'm worthy to call myself an ultra runner and I'm worthy to be in some of these races alongside some incredible runners. Get in, my buddy Matt. Get in, my buddy Matt. Go in to get my buddy Matt. <laughs> I'm so fucking happy I don't have to run anymore. Uh, I'm bringing in this wheelchair because I, I can still walk a little bit, but he's uh, he's he's hurting. So, uh, hey, team teamwork doesn't end when the race ends. It ends when we're in bed and uh, feeling better. <laughs> Getting this on a video to prove how awesome a team man I am. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 okay. Let's, let's there we go. <laughs> oh. Now I'm gonna find the elevator.